Our final contestant, contestant number nine, Tommy Lanham, Never Settle for Here. Never Settle for Here, Tommy Lanham. It is May 29th, 1991, and I am pumped. I'm thinking to myself, here I am, a high school graduate. I'm ready to go on to bigger and better things. I'm talking with my dad. I'm telling him, Dad, man, you haven't seen anything yet. And he looks at me, and he goes, boy? I always knew my dad was serious when he called me boy. I didn't like it, but it got my attention. He said, boy? I never thought I'd live to see this day. Well, that'll build your confidence, won't it? <laughs> but he had reason to feel that way because, you see, I was not a good kid. I think it started with my birth. <laughs> you see, I was born at a very young age. But not quite as young as most. Because you see, I was due in 1971. I wasn't born until 1972. <laughs> January 21st of 1972. Yes. And my mom went through such a big ordeal with the labor. It was 36 hours and they finally decided to do a C-section. I came out, I was a 10 pounds and 3 ounce size baby. I was all swollen and I was so ugly <laughs> that my parents refused to buy my baby pictures. <laughs> Here I am, an ugly baby. A couple years later, we're living up in northern Kentucky, metropolitan area. We had a fenced-in yard. I'm out there playing, and all of a sudden, I learned a new skill. How to open the gate. And I am out of there. My mom comes out to check on me, realizes what's happened. She runs back in the house, calls the police, and the police say, Ma'am, I think we know where your son is. You see, I had walked several blocks away across a set of railroad tracks into a bar, <laughs> sitting on a stool, chatting with a couple of chicks. I was not a good kid. A few years later, I'm five years old. I hated my sister's Barbie dolls. Hated them. Because she paid more attention to them than she did me. So one night, there were a bunch of people over the house, so nobody was paying attention. I went into my sister's bedroom. I got one of her Barbie dolls. Several people over the house were smoking. So it was a good opportunity for a five-year-old to have access to a lighter. I went into my mom and dad's bedroom. I flicked my bick. What? <laughs> I actually lit her hair on fire then, and I threw that Barbie doll on my mom and dad's bed. <laughs> and I walked back into the living room and sat down and watched television. As I said, there were several people smoking that night, so that whole room was on fire before anybody realized it. You see, smoking really is bad for your health. <laughs> it didn't get any better when I got into school. I enjoyed going to school. I was never the kind of guy that wanted to skip school. I enjoyed I was just not a good student. I was average at best. I enjoyed it greatly. Matter of fact, I enjoyed the sixth grade so well, I took it twice. <laughs> but I never did well. I remember the disappointment on my choir teacher's face in high school when I told her I could not perform in the concert that weekend because my grades were so low. Here I am, an arsonist. Here I am, 
a disappointment. Here I am, a sixth grade flunky. When I graduated high school, I went on to college. People were surprised I would even go to college. But I did. Continued to struggle, but I went. I'm one of those people that squeezed a four-year degree into six. <laughs> and the whole time I was struggling, I kept hearing those voices. Man, what a lazy kid. A slacker. Here I am. A lazy slacker. After I graduated college, I came across a tape by, the man, by a man by the name of Zig Ziglar. It's called How to Be a Winner. And it was the first time that I heard somebody say to me, you were born to win. But in order to legitimately expect to win, you've got to plan to win and you've got to prepare to win. It was also the first time that I heard somebody say that failure is an event. It is not person. It was the first time that I heard somebody say that you can't go back and make a brand new beginning, but you can start now and make a brand new ending. It began to change my perspective, and I came to realize that here is where I am, but there is where I'll be. I went on to change my life. I started a ministry that became very, very successful. I joined Toastmasters International, which led to me getting invited to go to organizations and share my story and my insight. And oh yeah, I went back to college and got my master's in life coaching. It was a three-year degree. I finished it in a year and a half with a 4.0. Not bad for an ugly, disappointing sixth grade flunky. <laughs> I don't know where here is, but this is what I know. You are destined for greatness. But in order to achieve that greatness, you can't settle for here. You've got to move forward to the there that is waiting on you. And when you get there, you can say with confidence, I have found my there. Because I never settled for the here I used to be. If my dad were here right now, I'd look at him and I'd say, boy. Actually, I'd never call my dad boy, but I'd say, sir, you have lived to see this day. And might I add, you ain't seen nothing yet. Just a contest.